Welcome to NXCAM 20 Minute Tech Tips. Today's session is on how to fully control your tool paths using generic motion. The demo will last approximately 20 minutes and then we'll stay on the line and open up a chat window for Q&A. With that, I'd like to turn the session over to John Chaplin who's going to be doing our demonstration today. John, welcome. Thanks, Aaron. I'm setting up my desktop here. Uh, can everybody see me okay? Let's see. Yep, we can see you just fine. Great, great. Okay, this will be a brief demonstration on uh, using generic motion for creating drilling and milling operations. Um, generic motion can be used for uh, a few other types of things. Uh, it's been used for probing, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at, um, here I have a part sitting on a machine and uh, we might want to do something like some deck drilling of some spaced holes. Uh, generic motion would be great for an operation like that. Um, so um, to create a generic motion operation, it's available when you choose insert operation. And when your type is mill multi-axis, uh, we can go ahead and create a generic motion operation. Uh, we're going to be doing this using a drilling tool. The geometry parent is normally workpiece and um, method is usually left at method. Uh, we'll be fine here. And I can go ahead and uh, choose OK to create a generic motion operation. Now a generic motion operation is an operation that consists of a lot of little sub-operations. When I choose add new sub-operation, as you can see, I get quite a few choices. I can linear move to a point, linear move along a vector, linear move along a tool axis, and a lot of these other uh, choices. We can insert machine control commands. So I could bring the cutter to a point near the part and do something like turn on the coolant. Um, so there's quite a, quite a few options to drive your tool. Uh, one of the options that I like to use the most is this rotary point vector move. I think you'll see that it's very flexible and uh, user friendly. So um, what I want to start with here is creating a rotary point vector move. Now the first thing I probably want to do is present the tool near the part um, so that we wrap it up close to the part. So I'm going to say our motion type is going to be a rapid motion. And uh, the point that I want to go to is I'm going to pick a point on the model and then I'll just back it off a little bit in the X direction, a little bit in the Y direction, and lift it up a little bit in the Z direction and choose Apply. It gets me there. Now that I'm near the part, I might want to approach this hole and I can approach the uh, hole at the approach feed rate or at the rapid feed rate. We'll say let's go to the approach feed rate and the point that I want to go to is going to be the arc center of that now, if you wanted to back up a little bit off the hole, you can just drag the tool up the z-axis. I'll drag it up about 50 thousandths, so we're about 50 thousandths over the top of that hole. If you wanted to go to an exact and an associative value, you'd use the point constructor. You'd go to the uh, point dialog, and you'd open up rectangular offset, select the point, and then that point would be associative. Uh, or you could create the, the uh, associative points ahead of time would be another option. Uh, we're just going to use uh, locations on the model. And uh, so now that I've got the tool at that point, um, I want to do another uh, rotary uh, point vector move. Um, what I can do is say, um, in this case, I just want to visually drag it to the depth. But at this point, we're going to go to the cut feed rate. And I'm going to say, let's go oh, about that deep. And uh, choose Apply. Now we want to uh, go at a traversal feed rate because we're cutting air. So I'll say at the traversal feed rate, the next point that I want to go to is, I'll pick that arc, and I'll say let's go about, oh, 50 thousandths back uh, from that point. Choose Apply. Now we'll be back to the cut feed rate, and I'll say let's simply go to uh, about that deep, and choose Apply. Now to pull the drill out of the hole, I'll just say let's do another, uh, and we'll do this at the retract feed rate. I'll say the point that I want to uh, retract to is uh, the arc center of that, and we'll back it up about a hundred thousandths over the part. At the traversal feed rate, I'll go over to the next point, and again about a hundred thousandths over the part. 
And uh, now we're going to go, we're going to be uh, drilling again, so I'll go to the cut feed rate uh, to a point of about that deep. Apply at the traversal feed rate to a point of about here. So you can see this is pretty quick. Actually, I'll pick the, uh, uh, we'll, we'll call that good and choose apply. And then I'll say our next uh, point is going to be at the cut feed rate to a depth of about here. So you can see it's very uh, user friendly to be able to drive your tool this way. And uh, finally, we'll pull that drill out of there uh, because what I'll do is I'll do a um, at the retract feed rate. We'll just go to a point up about there, hit apply, and uh, then we want to get the tool away from the part so that we have a safe retract. So I'll just say our next motion is going to be uh, up there and over there and choose uh, apply and uh, that's that's about it. Now I can go ahead and generate that operation and when we verify it, we'll verify it with uh, machine simulation. If I right click I can choose um, a tool path simulate. It brings up the simulation control panel and of course uh, what I'd like to do is a, is a machine code, a g-code simulate because that's what we're actually going to be sending to the machine so I'll say uh, Give me a machine code simulate. One of the nice features when we're doing the machine code simulate, we'll see the rotary table move and everything. We'll see that in the, actually in the next operation. Uh, but we'll also see um, a simulation of the feed rates. If I go ahead and slow this down and play it forward. So it's happening as the tool is approaching the part there. Now if you watch the feed rates, the simulated feed rates, so it's going pretty fast, it slows down, speeds up, slows down, comes out pretty quick. You'll actually see the slowdown when you're doing the cutting and the, and the speed up when you're doing the traversals. It's not at the actual feed rates um, per time uh, and distance uh, that you're seeing that happen, but it's at a relative. So you can see when you're going faster or slower there with a the relative um, speed replay, which is kind of nice. So that would be a use of uh, a drilling tool in, the, in a deck drilling situation like that could come in very handy. Um, there's been a few enhancements in NXH generic motion where you can actually follow uh, edges and machine uh, surfaces with it. Um, and uh, we'll do that with another operation. Maybe I want to uh, bring a tool in and machine this face of this um, uh, pocketed shaped uh, area in the part. Uh, generic motion can work fine for that. I'll choose insert operation actually. Let me shut off before I do that. I'm going to shut off the machine. It will be distracting if we see the machine because the machine uh, simulation will come in after the fact. And uh, now I'll choose uh, insert operation and I'll say give me a generic motion operation this time using an end mill. Um, we're going to create some sub-operations, so I'll choose add new sub-operation. Again, I like those rotary point vector moves. I can simply pick a point near the part that I want to go to and then set my location. What we're going to do is present the tool near the part. Uh, we want to leave plenty of room for the uh, rotary table to be able to rotate. Uh, so we're getting the tool kind of close to the part. And then uh, to rotate the rotary table, what we can actually do is uh, rotate the tool. If I rotate the tool to 90 degrees, you'll see the effect of that when uh, we go ahead to uh, simulate that. And I'll pull the tool out about over here. And uh, that'll be kind of an approach motion to our cutting. Now with another rotary point vector move, what I want to do is uh, get the tool closer to the part. So I'll say the point that I want to go to is that point on the part. Lift it up a little bit and uh, out there. So we're going to do a, a few points in approaching the part. Now that I'm kind of close to the part, I'll say let's do another uh, rotary point vector move to there and uh, just move it off in the X direction. We're at the right height. All of this has been at the traversal feed rate. Um, I could shift it over to the rapid feed rate, 
would be fine. Either uh, depends on how you have your feed rate set up. Then finally, uh, what I want to do is I want to machine those edges so I can use a follow curve edge sub operation. Um, our um, selection toolbar is available, our curve rule toolbar, and the curve rule in this case is going to be just tangent curves. I can say the tangent curves that I want to follow are uh, and select that curve. It selects all the tangent curves and uh, choose OK. So now we've just machined that surface as we're going to see, but I want to end up by also pulling the tool off of the part. So I'll say let's add another new sub operation, another one of those rotary point vector moves. I'll say the uh, point that I want to go to in this case is just off the part a little bit. Apply, lift the tool up to get it away from the part safely. We'll drag it up to Z and uh, maybe over here on the X and choose uh, Apply, and that should about do it. We've just programmed a four-axis operation. And I'll turn the machine on, and we'll simulate that. If I go to the Operation Navigator, uh, I might want to gener generate that uh, generic motion operation. And then again, go to Toolpath Simulate. And we want to simulate the G-code the uh, machine code so that we'll actually see the uh, rotary table move and everything and play that forward. And uh, in comes the tool. I've got a couple of uh, safe approach points there so that we don't uh, wrap it up to the part too closely while the rotary table's turning. So we're coming into position. All these points can be edited as well. Perhaps I'd go back and edit that last point. We dropped down a little much on the Z. That's all editable. And now we're, we are machining that surface uh, using the cut feed rate. And I can speed that up a bit. And that is pretty much uh, some of the basic things that you can do with generic motion. Um, it's a very easy to use tool and um, in a lot of situations uh, it's just a tool that will get you there, get it done quickly and uh, uh, that, uh, that is the uh, demo.